Good afternoon, all. Camelback Trading 2724 coming to you this Thursday afternoon, November 21st. Looking at the SPY ETF on the market profile the last four or five days. And we go out with an inside day, which gives us a really, really nice opportunity going into tomorrow, last day of the week. We're now in a five day balance. Twice, yesterday and today, we got sucked into that previous nine-day balance, but both times managed to pull ourselves out of it. The question I kept posing today to myself and people I spoke to is, who won today? You know, was it the buyers or the sellers? Was it the buyers because after yesterday, the sellers couldn't take out even the previous day's low, get below that balance low and get into the other balance? And for the most part, after making a low, we basically had a pretty good push up to try to get the high until we flushed out an M? Or did the sellers win because we had overlap and a lower value? Trend day was never taken back from yesterday and we traded in a lower distribution all day. Yeah, I, I was giving it to the sellers because of those reasons, but I'll show you what I did today. And it was a good day and I did everything early because I had a little CD, a lot of CD going on later in the day. So early in the day, I said, the only trade I would take is to possibly short it up here because I know my out. And uh, even a lesser one would be to lean on M's low, value low, pre-market low. Well, the market opened right where I was wanted to get involved, tried to buy puts. They spread, they spread these contracts pretty wide on the opening, and I'm not going to reach across and grab, and grab an offer. So I put a bid in, did not get hit, traded straight down, missed a very, very nice trade. But so be it. Would have been a really good trade. So what did I do? I actually got involved on the long side down here, and it worked out pretty nicely. I bought it <clears throat> when we got right around M's low, below it, and the value low and then trade it back up into, now I'm in four tick increments, so it doesn't look like much, but if you spread it out, at the time when I bought it, the volume really tapered off and I had a really good feeling that we would at least get back to where we were trading most of the volume in A period. And that's exactly what we did. So it was a good trade. B period came, took out the low, was ready to get involved, did not right away because we've had a habit of B taking out, A's low, and then ripping higher. Basically did the same thing, but this time when we came higher, all it got to at the time was value high on the day and the meat of where we traded already. So I shorted it. Nice short. Came right back down. Covered it at A's low. Did nothing in C period. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Really thought if, if we took out the previous day's low, there's not much below there as we've talked about. Thought maybe we'd get some legs. But boy, did the sellers fail. We had singles and B. Sellers just totally failed. Couldn't do anything with them. Filled the singles. So when D opened and came down, again, it tapered pretty quickly. I really, there was To me, the sellers had their chance. Right? We one time frame down, three time frames. We had a trend day down. And we had a chance to take out yesterday's low. Well, they didn't do any of those things. So once D opened and couldn't take out, uh, when the volume tapered, I got involved even before we took out C's high. Got involved with some pretty decent size on calls. And as soon as I bought them, lo and behold, not only did we pop C, we popped pretty good. It's a really nice trade and got out of it. Those are my three trades on the day. Long, short, long. Now, as the day went on, now, so we were six wide here. Initially, I was looking for an afternoon rally high because of the way, because we had overlap in the lower value and because we we're in the lower distribution. But I never, I just never felt comfortable to take the trade because each time we kept going up in G and H, we had a poor high in G and H, really looked like they might want to try to get higher and take out the day's high. Well, they never did. So any short you took would have been the right play. G and H short came in. K short came in, so it would have been nice. I didn't do any of them, but that was fine. And then M absolutely flushed out as weak longs got taken out. So it sets up for a really nice opportunity tomorrow with the inside day. 
Okay, destinations, upside, 311.01, today's high. Then the single prints, a trend day from yesterday, five ticks, 311.02, they start, get filled at 07. 311.82, uh, 311.82, daily high, 311.98, 11 wide for the 19th, and then the two all-time highs that you have. For the downside, Again, we don't have anything now to today's low. Yesterday was a buck seventy-five away. Today it's a dollar away, just about three oh nine thirty-nine. And then below that, we have that previous day low of three oh nine oh six. And then I gave you all the other downside destinations over the last couple of days. So let's go to the charts and we'll come back here just quickly. So the weekly, right now with one day to go, we're one time framing up. Six weeks, unless we have a really decent flush out tomorrow, it would be seven weeks. But I still wouldn't rule that out yet. Daily, five-day balance. All-time high is the top of that five-day balance. Yesterday's low of 309.06 is the bottom of it. So again, it's a four-day balance. Four, I'm sorry, four-dollar range. If we get accepted below 309.99, I mean, we're going to encompass a lot of this. It's going to be one big balance. So we have an inside day where we trade inside the previous day's range. As far as I'm concerned, it sets up for, for this. One of two things is going to happen. We're going to come out to the upside, take out yesterday's high. And if we do that, <clears throat> there's a very good chance to at least test the all-time high, right? If not tomorrow, Monday. And that, don't forget, next week's Thanksgiving. It's going to be a pretty slow week as we go on. and So that's that's something to remember, too. That doesn't mean it can't be volatile, but it's going to be slow, volume-wise. The other scenario is the Bears finally get something going here, where we t come out of the inside day to the downside, if you do that, you're going to take out yesterday's low. So you're going to be at the bottom. Not only are you going to come out of an inside day to the downside, you're going to be coming out of a five-day balance to the downside, accepted into this nine-day balance. And then you see what kind of legs they had. Like I said, the destinations. Look, the next one is 308 and change. And then 307.27, I believe. 307.66, I'm sorry. And then 307.27, which is last week's low. So I don't put anything past if we get any kind of volume tomorrow. We can, we can test last week's low. That's why I'm not going to say for sure, definitely, that this one time frame and up holds. Now, obviously, the Bears have shown zero ability to get that kind of thing done. We're talking less than 1% or 1% we're talking. But they have not shown the ability to do that. But it should set up for a really, really nice trade tomorrow. Hope you had a great day trading. Have a great evening and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.